am Janine Truitt. I am the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations, LLC. It is a talent management firm where I help companies, small to mid-sized businesses, focus on their talent management strategy. So everything from attraction to how they're developing their employees to how they're retaining them ultimately. Um, on the other end of that, you have to look at resources, of course, and so I also have a suite of services that look at HR tech implementation. And so I do help businesses make purchasing decisions around HR tech. Um, I also, on the opposite side, advise HR tech vendors of what the marketplace looks like, what people like practitioners like myself formally are looking for in the products. So the HR tech uh, space, in my opinion at least, is oversaturated and that's not a bad thing. Um, we're just at a point now where I think that we have enough tools, gadgets, and, and otherwise to kind of make some good decisions about what we need to kind of power our programs and initiatives in HR. So that said, you know, you have all of these different systems, but you have a lot of systems that either don't speak to one another, don't play nice with one another when you're implementing them. And so that becomes a problem for the customer, and I've seen that on that end where Know, with their best intentions, they may want a job aggregator, they may need an LMS, they may need a recruitment software kind of thing, and none of them speak to one another. And so, like, that's not helpful. So, I think we're getting to a point where we need to see the market um, move towards more collaboration, and so that might mean that competitors are coming together to better service the customer um, because it really is about the customer, it doesn't really the HR departments are not compelled to spend money on this unless it's going to work for them. I think they're kind of wising up to it um, and it's one of the more expensive purchases that they make from um, an HR perspective. So I think where the market has to move is where they're kind of looking at how all these pieces work together and how they can better serve the customer. Definitely. I think the companies that are willing to do the open APIs, it helps a ton because it just means that they don't you don't have to be dealing with customizations because you know in the past companies have customized and customized to the point where you can't customize anymore and it becomes an issue when you want to hook into other things. The plug and play really plays nice because it doesn't really matter what platform you're on they can just kind of hook things in and have that information be fluid and really it's all about the information being fluid and having it be accessible. If the information is not accessible, it doesn't really help them. So I think that's a huge thing. It's hard to know. I think it's it will be a very nice precedent for the the space if they can make it work um, in that you know IBM and SAP when you think about those two players you just think they're competitors and um, they're obviously large and very influential in their own right so for them to come together and try to do something in the name of the customer so that things flow easily from a cloud to cloud perspective if they can get it right it will be powerful um, because it will mean that people don't have to necessarily stick within one of those ecosystems. So it would mean that they could have success factors and have another IBM product and have that work very fluidly, which is huge. Sometimes people don't want the same platform. I mean, there are several HCM platforms that are, you know, LMS, everything is comprised on that one platform. And sometimes you just want a little something different. So I think if they can pull it off, it will set a really nice precedent for other companies to follow. I think their intention is well. I just think that there's a lot more work on the back end for them to really make it something that will work for the customer. And they haven't really defined it, um, so I'm waiting for them to explicitly define how that's going to work out. I do understand that it's going to be success factors in Police Central that's going to somehow speak to the talent platform and Connexa. And so I think that's the basic understanding that most of us have about it. But like. Customers want to know what happens to my information. Is it going to speak fluidly? Am I going to have issues where I'm going to be doing workarounds with the system? If you've done implementations, you just know that certain ecosystems just don't play well together. And those two are two that you know don't. And so 
I have every confidence they could if they work at it, and I suppose if they put it out there that they're going to try to make it work, but it's just not clear yet. Uh, but I'm excited about it because I think it could really set a nice precedent in the space. I like Ultimate Software. Uh, I think, you know, from a recruiting software standpoint, I feel like they get the concept of talent first, and really that's what my company's about. I'm all about companies that are willing to put their talent first and not look at them as a means to an end. Um, if you look at the reports on Ultimate, or if you get customer satisfaction surveys on them, they tend to do pretty well in the space in terms of what they're able to do. So I think they're worth a look. I think iSims is, you know, one that is also a nice player and doesn't necessarily have the market presence that some of the bigger ones do, but they do well with what they do within the space from a recruitment software um, standpoint, and that's really all you want. Like, I think sometimes we get kind of hooked into the bells and whistles of what something can do, and I think really what's most important is that people can get their jobs done and they can get it done efficiently. So, um, those two products, they get it done for the customers that they serve, and so I would definitely suggest people going and seeing it. I think it's important for them to remember or to tap into what the practitioner's mindset is. Um, you know, there are some things that, in theory, seem like good integrations, good tools um, when they build them out for you know some of these uh, products, but it's not really helpful to the practitioner when they don't work. Um, Security is huge. I think that's one of the things for me that's most lacking as well is just when you get down to it, a lot of them work the same and they work well, but then there'll be a security issue whereby you can't use one thing or another. And just if, for instance, and I'm not going to name the company, but I was doing an implementation on a recruitment software um, product, and you know, the company was very excited to implement the recruitment part and the onboarding part. We were told everything was secure. They gave us all the security certifications. Well, that was great, but when we really got down to the implementation, we found out that in onboarding, the information in transit wasn't being encrypted, and this was like a government um, situation, and so it kind of defeats the purpose of the onboarding product if you're not encrypting in transit because there's PII that goes into that onboarding product. It wasn't even on their roadmap. We had to kind of tell them that it should be on their roadmap because we needed it to use the product, so it was just kind of shocking to me that companies at this point don't understand the necessity for those kind of security things, because that's like pretty simple. That's not even like a big thing. So I think everybody needs to be focusing on cybersecurity and security, especially if you want to tap into the government federal contractor space. You're not going to get in unless your security is up to snuff.